Welcome to this video. I want to show you a book that we've had in our family for many years, as long as I can remember really, and it's called The Bunyip of Berkeley's or maybe Barclays Creek. It's by Jenny Wagner and the pictures, illustrations are by someone called Ron Brooks. Now this was published, I think this might have been Australian, I'm not sure. Um, it says for copyright reasons, this edition it's not for sale in the USA. That is interesting. And it was originally, when it came out, 50p to buy in the United Kingdom or $1.95 in Canada. It's, a, it's described as a simple and appealing book. It won the Children's Book Council of Australia's Picture Book of the Year for 1974. I think it came out in 1974. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Let me just see if I can find out from the ISBN. Oh, I think it came out in 1973. I was born in 74, so this this is this book is potentially older than me. And it does look a little bit worn around, a bit sort of like, I don't know, it's been well read. Uh, but then it's old, you know, it's 47 years old, something like that. It starts with, one night something very large and muddy heaved itself onto the bank of Berkeley's Creek. What am I, it murmured. What do I look like? A platypus told him he was a bunyip. But what is a bunyip? Although everyone had an opinion, no one really knew. So the bunyip set off to find out for himself. And that's what this book is about. It's a, a self-discovery mission. Anyway, let me show you. I'll read this. I'll read through the book and show you the illustrations, which are wonderful. The Bunyip of Berkeley's Creek. Late one night, for no particular reason, something stirred in the black mud at the bottom of Berkeley's Creek. The fish swam away in fright, and the night birds in the trees hid their heads under their wings. When they looked again, something very large and very muddy was sitting on the bank. What am I? it murmured. What am I? What am I? What am I? And the night birds quickly hid their heads under their wings again. In the morning, the thing was still sitting there, scraping the mud off itself to see what was underneath. What am I? he kept saying. What am I? But the night birds were all asleep. A passing platypus solved the problem. You are a bunyip, he said. Bunyip? murmured the bunyip contentedly. Bunyip. Then he sat up straight and called out. What do I look like? But the platypus had dived into the creek. Am I handsome? called the bunyip. Am I? But nobody answered him and the bunyip went on sitting there for a long time, lost in thought. Presently, a wallaby came by to drink at the creek. What do bunyips look like? asked the bunyip. Horrible, said the wallaby. They have web feet and feathers. Fine, handsome feathers, said the bunyip, hopefully. Horrible feathers, said the wallaby firmly, and finished her drink and hopped off. Handsome webbed feet, called the bunyip but there was no answer. The bunyip sighed and walked off to find someone else. There was a rustling in the bushes behind him and suddenly an emu shot past. Wait, called the bunyip, running after him. What do bunyips look like? The emu stopped and considered. They are fur, he said at last, and tails. How many tails? asked the bunyip. One to each bunyip, replied the emu. Fine, handsome tails, said the bunyip. Horrible tails, said the emu, and even more horrible fur. And he settled his feathers and crouched down low and streaked off into the distance. The bunyip wandered sadly along the creek. Will someone tell me what bunyips look like, he said, to anyone who would listen. But there was no answer. Further along the creek, he met a man. The man was busy with a notebook and pencil and did not look at the bunyip. Shh, he said, I'm busy. The bunyip waited for a long time and then he said very slowly and clearly, please can you tell me what bunyips look like? Yes, said the man without looking up. Bunyips don't look like anything. Like nothing, said the bunyip. Like nothing at all, said the man. Are you sure, said the bunyip. Quite sure, said the man and look right through him. Bunyips simply don't exist. Now sadly there's a bit missing here, there's a bit of page missing, so I don't know what the story says. I'm going to have to not read that bit. 
the bunyip was shaken. Then he sighed a long, deep sigh. What a pity, he murmured. What a pity, what a pity. And he walked slowly back to his water hole. And then this bit's missing. The bunyip walked all day, and just as the sun was setting, he came to a quiet, still billabong. This will do, said the bunyip to himself. No one can see me here. I can be as handsome as I like. And he unpacked his bag and laid his bunyip comb and mirror out on the sand and put his billy on to boil. No one saw him and no one spoke to him. But late that night, for no particular reason, something stirred in the black mud at the bottom of the billabong. The bunyip put his comb down in surprise and stared. Something very large and very muddy was sitting on the bank. What am I? it murmured. What am I? What am I? The bunyip jumped up in delight. You are a bunyip, he shouted. Am I? Am I really? asked the other bunyip. And then, what do I look like? You look just like me, said the bunyip happily. And he lent her his mirror to prove it. And that's the end and it feels like a happy ending. But what confuses me is how come he had this mirror all along and never thought to look in it to find out what it looked like? I don't know. It's weird, but whew, there we go. It's a nice story. I love the illustrations. I hope you enjoyed the video. If like me, this is, you know, bringing back memories from your childhood. Well, I hope it's been a nice nostalgic experience for you stumbling across this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.